The Hole and Starter remakes continue, and this time we've got Swampert, the final evolution of Mudkip, and thus an extension of the I heard you like Mudkip's meme that dominated the Pokesphere in the late 2000s. Swampert has been a fan favorite since it first traveled with trainers in Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. And then when it returned in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire with a new Mega Stone in tow, Swampert's Pokedex descriptions sure are striking. Being able to drag an entire ship is no mean feat, even in the Poke world. Today, we we find out if it's time in the competitive scene was similarly impressive and so we ask how great was swampert actually and in this video we'll be going over these competitive formats Rock resists were one of the most important aspects of advanced OU for withstanding the mighty rock slides of Tyranitar and Aerodactyl. And the king of the rock resists and physical tanking as a whole was Swampert. Water and ground are individually fantastic defensive types, and together they are absolutely excellent, to say nothing of Pert's other excellent traits. It had it all. It lacked a weakness to Earthquake the rock slides came paired with. It resisted Meteor Mash. It healed in the ever-present Sandstorm. It had excellent physical bulk. It could immediately threatened the physical attackers like Salamence in return, and it actually hit everything for decent damage. It was a defensive staple that wasn't just a walling blob. Pert covered so much so easily that it was incredibly easy to slap it on a team and be well off against a significant portion of the tier. It was as popular as it was effective, making it one of the most important Pokemon in advance, defining much of the tier with its presence. For example, Zapdos would be better off with Hidden Power Ice against pretty much everything else, but being walled by Swampert was so bad that his Hidden Power Grass was its go-to by far. In the early days of Advance, Swampert was an incredibly popular partner for Flygon, as the two combined to counter Electrics regardless of which Hidden Power they chose. Hidden Power Grass was indeed a staple on many Pokemon for Swampert, including even Dragon Dance Tyranitar, which wasn't even guaranteed to beat Pert with it. Since Swampert's great special bulk meant it could avoid a two-hit KO after protecting for extra leftovers. Indeed, Swampert's Protect was so good at keeping it healthy that it made one of the most impossible Pokemon to KO in the tier despite not having a reliable recovery and being affected by spikes. Even Pokemon that hit it for decent damage with stab moves like Mixed Bents or Offensive Combine Jirachi would still often use Hidden Power Grass because if you weren't hitting Swampert for huge damage, it very often wasn't enough since Swampert was threatening you back in return. And of course, Swampert had the bulk to live even the strongest Hidden Power Grasses from full health, making its retaliatory Hydro Pump even stronger. Swampert anchored pretty much every team style in the metagame with its stand their tank set, from hard stall to balance with or without spikes to physical and special offense. You simply could not go wrong with putting Swampert on your team. It had some variety to its game too. Earthquake and Ice Beam were all Swampert really needed to cover its targets. Water Stab, whether Hydro or Surf, was of course quite helpful to sting the likes of Skarmory and Gengar, but if Swampert's team covered it in this area, its last move slot could be altered. Some players liked putting Curse on it to one-on-one -on -one matchups against Pokemon it otherwise lose like Suicune and Blizzard. Rest was an option as well, letting it shrug off Toxics. Rest Sleep Talk sets were also solid before the debilitating Sleep Talk mechanic discovery. Roar Swampert was also effective, letting it stave off Cursed Snorlax, Calm Mind Suicune, Swords Dance Baton Pass Celebi, Swords Dance Heracross, or Dragon Dance Gyarados without Taunt attempting to set up on it. It was especially effective alongside the spikes that Swampert was so often paired with. Toxic was also an effective choice, especially nice for ruining other Swampert one-on-one. -on -one. Speaking of Toxic, eventually new Swampert sets emerged. Instead of running Earthquake and Ice Beam to cover threats, it would run Surf as its one attacking move, earning it the name Monopert, and cover threats like Salamence with Toxic. Then, after Protect, it could slot in another utility move. First, it was Roar, then at the height of the metagame's obsession with the Toxic Protect strategy, which Swampert was one of the strongest users with its new mono attacking set, Refresh came around, letting Swampert stay in on the likes of Toxic Skarmory, Blissey, and yes, other Swampert that it normally run from. Monopert eventually became incredibly customizable to its players' liking, with players even running Focus Punch in the last slot to surprise Blissey. It was once again testament to Swampert being able to do everything. This extended to its EVing too, with occasional heavy investment in special defense or even special attack, with the latter enjoying the benefits of an invested Ice Beam singing its best answer, Celebi, much harder than expected. It could afford this because it was so naturally physically tanky, it could still perform its primary function of taking on the tier's main physical attackers. Though Tank Swampert was 
one of the most important advanced Pokemon, no matter which variation it took on. Eventually, offensive sets became popular for this exact reason. Its natural physical bulk was still solid for checking major attackers, and all one had to do was pair it with some anti-physical attacking backup like Metagross and potentially Salamence as well, that it was likely to be paired with anyway, to compensate for the lack of defensive investment. And the reward? Remember how Tank Swapper was great in part because it hit everything for decent damage? Well, what if you invested in its offenses fully? Turns out when you did that, you had a Pokemon that could act as a defensive stopgap, at least temporarily, while seriously threatening an enormous portion of the tier in return. Offensive Swapper first burst onto the scene with its Salak Endeavor set, though it wasn't what you'd call a speedster. It hit a strong 360 speed with maximum investment and a Salak boost, allowing it to unleash a unique bevy of offensive threat on the opponent. After substituting to low health, it could either smash away with invested torrent boosted hydro pumps with ice beam covering salamence and weakened celebi or it could utilize endeavor which would bring the opponent to whichever hp swampert was and so long as it was lower would substitute that wasn't a problem and if swampert subbed down to one hp a sand affected pokemon would be finished off by the sand that was going to be in play this set was incredibly effective as a way to up the tempo of swampert's game no longer letting you play around it with faster hp grasses from something like charizard and it was quite popular on successful offensive teams as a result. The fact that it wanted to be at low HP to take advantage of Torrent, Endeavor, and Select Berry meant that it taking damage from, say, Metagross's Meteor Mash actually worked in its advantage. It had flexibility in its last move slot as well, sometimes using Roar to turn the tables on recovery spamming walls like Milotic and Blissey that would attempt to stall out Endeavor's 8 PP. Now they'd have to switch into Swampert again, and they wouldn't be able to withstand the Endeavor. Of course, this Swampert set's reliance on Select Berry meant it couldn't switch into attacks repeatedly, and it occasionally missed Stab Earthquake. And then, all-out offensive Swampert emerged. It ran lefties and Earthquake. It wasn't as focused on being as fast as possible, so it could both invest in physical bulk and run a special attacking boosting nature to ensure its Hydro Pump's really, really strong. In its last move slot, Focus Punch to ensure Blissey wouldn't be able to wall it at all. This Swampert set forced standard Scar and Bliss teams to really evaluate their approach. Remember the aforementioned Tank Swampert with special defense investment? That was a response to this offensive perk. This set also started experimenting with Curse in the last slot, letting it break through otherwise difficult enemies like Milotic, Suicune, and physically defensive Jirachi, while maintaining its anti blissy ability. Overall, whichever guy Swampert took up, it was one of the best Pokemon in advance, both countering and shaping the metagame around it. Swampert brought its resist-laden typing to Generation 4 and achieved new levels of support by setting up the hazard that took the world by storm, Stealth Rock. Its incredible bulk meant it was one of the most consistent Pokemon in the game at getting rocks. All reliable, they called it. And it fit on all sorts of teams as a result. From fast-paced offense to hard stall, it still played at a solid pace for the former, especially if it got into a groove with Roar against a set of Pokemon that struggled to scratch it. And its hit taking was invaluable for the latter who loved how it helped pivot and play around seemingly everything. Swampert was synonymous with the lead metagame for a long time. Leads were all concerned with getting up Stealth Rock, and Swampert leveraged that superb bulk in order to get them up right from the beginning. Throughout the constantly shifting fourth generation, Tank Swampert was a constant, from its early days taking on Garchomp in Diamond and Pearl, to warding off the increasingly popular Heat Ran during Platinum, to being one of the few halfway decent checks to Salamence during its reign over Heart Gold and Soul Soul. Over. A healthy Swampert was even able to withstand the monstrously powerful plus one life orb outrage. Swampert didn't have much variation to its game, but it didn't really need to. As the tank set was just so important to so many teams, the most you tweak were maybe some EVs. It wasn't uncommon to see players running four speed just to outrun other Swampert. And in the last move slot, Roar was the most common and effective for its all-purpose utility, doing everything from scouting the opposing team early game to phasing out a boosted sweeper like Wish or Substitute to Calm Mind Jirachi, but Protect was also excellent to gain leftovers longevity, block explosions from Metagross, as well as scout the intentions of choice users. Some Salt teams even dropped Rock's Pert entirely, since such squads had many potential Rockers and chose to run Roar Protect sets to great effect. The only other time Swampert ever ran non-Rock sets were the extremely rare Curse variants, which could struggle to make a dent early on, but excelled at outlasting its checks. Swampert's main flaw was that for all its efficacy against offensive threats, 
it tended to fall flat against defensive teams and the more defensive teams populated the metagame the more it could feel like a liability at times it didn't have to be this way with the right supporting cast but not every swampert supporting cast was going to be equally good this in conjunction with the rise in grass types after the bans of latias and salamence meant swampert experienced a slight dip in usage for some time it came back however when the main rapid spitter in the metagame was no longer fortress but starmie starmie struggled to effectively beat pert one-on-one -on -one, making swampert a reliable rocker once more however that wasn't all players began dipping into swampert's offensive capabilities to take advantage of those expecting the defensive set the first that really emerged with any prominence was spec swampert between its powerful hydro pump earth power and ice beam it was able to mortally threaten popular bulky cores consisting of pokemon like hippowdon heat ran skarmory starmie jirachi and the rotom appliances unlike the other specs waters popular at the time starmie and kingdra specs pert was difficult to word down passively thanks to its stealth rock resistance and sandstorm immunity as well as not fearing revenge killing from scarf tyranitar it didn't end there either choice band swampert became popular what it lacked in the ability to immediately threaten skarmory it made up for with its aforementioned resilience which let it spam waterfall repeatedly until it found that one flinch it needed to break the game open many stall teams at the time went without water resist and swampert punished them spectacularly being able to so resoundingly threaten blissey and the emerging popular clefable was incredibly useful not just with its waterfall spam but also its access to superpower letting it threaten a cold one hit KO one on one eventually players started blending the aggression of these offensive variants of pert with the rocks and defensive utility of the tank some bulk investment alongside leftovers then either physical special or mixed attacking allowing swamper to leverage its natural defensive equity alongside its newfound ability to threaten defense some players were so taken by the mixed attacking potential that they took a page out of advances book and began using focus punch in the stealth rock slot even hidden power electric was occasionally used in that slot swamper used to be considered a one trick mud fish its one trick was excellent and important but it was just the one trick however it proceeded to demonstrate just how untrue that was while maintaining its status as one of the most important pokemon in the tier once again Come black and white, Swampert was unceremoniously thrust out of the OU metagame it had been such an integral part of on account of several factors. Number one, a Pokemon named Ferrothorn. Number two, Brutal Rain and Dragon-related power creep. And number three, Water-type competition better suited to taking on the first two. Thus, Swampert dropped to UU and there it excelled. Gen 5 UU has famously been noted for its similarity to Gen 4 OU, so it's no surprise Swampert fit right in. And indeed, Swampert's presence partially propelled such perception to the public. Public. It got right to business, tanking all manner of hits, many of them from familiar faces like Flygon and Weavile, and setting up rocks, hitting that which checked it hard in return, and roaring the opposition around. Swampert's typing was especially important in this tier, given its emphasis on offense from the Fires, Darmanitan, and Victini, and the Electric, Zapdos, and Raikou. Being able to check both in one slot was incredible, and Swampert often paired with Flygon Advanced Style to help cover against potential hidden power grass from the Electrics. It also became excellent at spreading status, thanks to a phenomenal new move at its disposal, Scald. With the numerous switching opportunities afforded it by its defensive profile, Swampert was constantly going for burns and nothing really enjoyed switching into it, making it even easier for Swampert to push damage onto the opposing team without having to hit it particularly hard. Just rocks, roar, and burn. Most teams needed standard tank Swampert's defensive utility, but that made it all the more surprising and therefore devastating when the occasional choice band set showed up and unexpectedly rolled over an unsuccessful suspecting team which forgot that it packed an excellent base 110 attack stat swamper was not at all a flashy pokemon but it was an incredibly important one within gen 5 uu as it anchored many a team in need of the ability to withstand some of the biggest hits in the tier without becoming purely passive and as such racked up another successful generation Swampert didn't really have any defining niche in Gen 5 VGC. Much like its OU counterpart, it hadn't any role to play in the Weather Wars, nor was it particularly apt at taking on most weather abusers or the Pokemon used to counter them. Sure, its typing was great against Thunderous and Zapdos, but it shared that typing with Gastrodon, who was much better thanks to its immeasurably useful water immunity attained via its Storm Drain ability. However, a select few innovative players did use Swampert's unique talents en route to some notable placements. These talents, 
hence its much greater offensive potential, weren't as useful or impactful as Gastrodon's, but they had their own little place. In 2012, Dawes used a max attack adamant ground gem Swampert, letting it plow through Metagross en route to top cutting the US Nationals. 2013 saw some inspiration from this, as in the seniors division of the US Nationals, Kyle L also used Swampert to reach 6. Meanwhile, Nabil L reached top 16 at the German Nationals. It wasn't much, but hey, it was a legit, albeit small niche for Swampert in Gen 5 VGC. Swampert returned to Yu Yu in Generation 6, doing Swampert things once again. Its typing and bulk let it switch in against key offensive threats, it got up rocks, it roared opponents around, it went for Scald Burns, simple, but incredibly important throughout X and Y Yu Yu. Swampert was a cornerstone of the tier's defense. It wasn't just to resist the Pokemon like Victini and Mega Aerodactyl, it was effective at taking hits from, though those were of course incredibly important, but also that classic Swampert quality where its tanking ability even against strong neutral attacks such as say, those from Scarf High Dragon was a key part of pivoting around dangerous opponents. Swampert's longevity also made it a particularly effective rocker since it could still stick around to relay the rocks in the face of the newly buffed Defog, or as came and reshaped Yu Yu significantly. Swampert continued to maintain a solid defensive presence in the tier, but it struggled more. Now, it wasn't because it was bad, rather because of the direction the tier took. The bulky water-heavy Scald spamming metagame meant Seismitoad, with its water absorb ability granting it an immunity to this devastating move, became preferred as the tier's defensive water ground type, especially since this made it a better stealth rocker for going up against removal options in Empoleon and Tentacruel. Though Toad envied Swampert's far superior physical bulk, Swampert wasn't really too bummed out about this paradigm shift, because it wasn't just Swampert anymore. Auras had also introduced Mega Swampert, a brand new beast of a Pokemon with every non-HP stat improved. Most notably, it packed a whopping base 150 attack and it got a new ability as well. Swift Swim, making it a potentially devastating Rain Sweeper. Mega Swampert was briefly tried in OU alongside the other new Oras Megas, but its viability in the tier was tied to Rain, which, attempted though it was, never managed to land any sort of consistency, and thus wasn't used. It didn't help that, thanks to Gen 6 mechanics, Mega Swampert wouldn't receive the Swift Swim boost on the turn it Mega Evolved, making it easier for opponents to limit its opportunities and play around it. Mega Swampert settled into UU instead, and that was just fine, because there it was monstrous. Rain teams weren't used in Yu Yu, but that wasn't a problem. Mega Swampert would simply set up Rain Dance for itself, and it was absolutely lights out as a late game cleaner, ruthlessly outspeeding and finishing off weakened teammates. Mega Swampert was far from just a Rain abuser either. It was quite excellent without Rain, and offensive Stealth Rock sets popped up, combining Mega Swampert's immediately threatening offense with the utility of Stealth Rock that no hazard remover was going to want a part of. And when Mandibuzz popped up and used this to try and thwart that, Mega Swampert just slapped on Stone Edge, ripping through it nicely while also completely ruining Gyarados. This set also took advantage of Mega Swampert's improved bulk, since it could invest in HP now that it wasn't going to be maxing out its speed to take advantage of Swift Swim. No passive recovery from leftovers? No problem. Its teammate Wish Florges would happily help it out. Withstanding Mega Swampert's brutal assault was bad enough already, but with Wish support, it got to bludgeon you repeatedly, and handling that was incredibly difficult. Overall, the 6th generation was another successful one for Swampert. It's Mega form providing it a much needed rejuvenation. Solid though Rain teams were, Mega Swampert wasn't the best or most popular choice for them. Mega competition was stringent, and as a swift swimmer, its physical nature meant it wasn't as scary as the special based Ludicolo, which had nary a case for the ever-present Landorus Therian's Intimidate. Plus, it needed to spend a turn Mega Evolving before it received its swift swim boost, and every turn was absolutely crucial with battles as short as VGCs. It was much preferable to have swift swimmers who had that doubled speed right as they were sent out alongside Politoed. Still, Mega Swampert was a powerful Pokemon with a good stat spread, sometimes not even needing rain support, and thus it had a decent niche leading to a solid smattering of placements. These players on screen did very well with Mega Swampert. But you know what actually got used more than Mega Swampert? That's right, Base Swampert. Why? Well, an expert belt set created by the late Angel Miranda had emerged, combining the support of Wide Guard with surprisingly hard-hitting Scalds, Ice Beams, and Earth Powers that allowed for unexpected KOs against Landorus Therians and Mega Mawiles, expecting to withstand physical attacks thanks to Intimidate. It was a terrific blend of team support and offensive threat not replicated by its competitors. News of its effectiveness took off, and it found a solid deal of popularity and success. These players on screen did very well with base Swampert.
Of course, both swappers completely disappeared in the restricted metagame of 2016. But hey, overall swappers Gen 6 BGC season was highly unusual, but more than decent. Generation 7 saw many changes favorable to Rain in the OU metagame. There was a new Drizzle Pokemon, Pelipper, which was vastly superior for its access to U-turn, making it easier to facilitate precise switches to the Rain abusers, which were operating with limited Rain turns. Rain teams were also improved by the addition of Ash Greninja, which, unlike its predecessor, Specs Kingdra, was a major threat outside of Rain as well, improving such teams' consistency greatly. So too did access to Z-moves, ensuring the collective offensive attack really had enough punch to break through the opposition. Finally, new mechanics meant Mega Swamper got its Swift Swim speed boost on the turn in Mega Evolve, giving it a much greater freedom to attack and making it much more threatening as a result. Rain teams became an incredibly consistent, threatening playstyle in Gen 7 OU, and Mega Swamper was a major part of that, as it effortlessly posed great damage to much of the tier. Its rain boosted waterfalls were highly spammable, especially when popular water resist Toxapex didn't want to come near its huge earthquake. Mega Swamper was excellent with just waterfall, earthquake, and ice punch, leaving a flexibility in its move slot that allowed its user to turn the tables on several checks. Substitute was a popular choice, allowing Mega Swamper to circumvent the pivoting prediction games that many teams would be forced into to try and ride out the rain turn. Toxic allowed it to ruin the otherwise safe answers that were Tangrowth and Slowbro. Sometimes Ice Punch was dropped and Sub Toxic were paired to great effect. Stealth Rock was great utility as always. Superpower was key in letting Mega Swamper get past the tiers Grass Steals in Ferrothorn and Kartana, and this was absolutely game-changing, as even if it didn't land the target, and it often did, it meant the opponent wouldn't be able to utilize them as checks and there weren't too many other Pokemon capable of taking its attacks. Additionally, being able to put a serious charge into another common check, Rotom Wash, was helpful as well. Whichever it chose, Mega Swampert was seriously excellent. It was so good and so popular that it triumphantly returned to OU proper as a legitimate, terrifying part of the metagame. Meanwhile, Base Swampert returned to UU once again, its placement not threatened by Seismatoad this time, as Pert's greater physical bulk was invaluable in this harder-hitting tier. Thus, Swampert resumed resumed its pert-like activities, setting up the rocks, tanking the hits, dishing out the roars and skulls, the usual it was so reliable at, though it used Toxic much more often this time around, as it couldn't solely depend on Scald for passive damage anymore since Burn had been nerfed to 6.25% and wanted to more directly threaten the likes of Latias and High Dragon. Swamper took on Mega Aerodactyl with Aplomb once again, as well as Mega Manetric, Rotom Heat, and Mega Aggron. As usual, if it didn't hard counter a threat, it generally helped play around threats like Mimic Q, Cobalion, Infernape, Mamoswine, and Mega Sharpedo. Again, Swampert wasn't flashy, but it was an important part of the tier, quietly holding teams together with its combination of hit taking and utility. Generation 7 was an immense success for Swampert, its best in many years. With the new and improved Mega Speed mechanic, Swapper was much more capable of slotting effectively onto Rain teams in Gen 7 VGC. Thus, during the 2018 season, it saw a good deal more usage and success on such teams, as they were now able to fully make use of its destructive talents without the hindrance of its exploitable first turn as it Mega Evolved. It still wasn't a world beater, but Mega Swapper was now far more legitimate a choice, more than base pert at least, which wasn't used, and this was evidenced by Mega Pert's placements, which are as follows. These players on screen did very well with Mega Swampert on their team. Swampert, of course, disappeared completely for the restricted metagame of the year afterwards. But finally, Mega Pert was the prevailing choice in the VGC meta. Swampert joined Generation 8 in the Crown Tundra, but with no Mega, unfortunately. But Game Freak kindly made up for this by gifting it Flip Turn, a physical water type switch move that elevated standard tank Swampert's utility even further. Now it could directly use its amazing defensive profile to help its teammates by safely bringing in the frailer ones it was tasked with taking the hits for. This was so excellent, Swampert was briefly used in early Crown Tundra OU to help get massive threats like Feromosa on the field safely, though it would eventually 
quickly head to the UU tier once again. There, it resumed its usual activities, but with its new switch move support angle as well. It was particularly apt at getting the frail Zygarde 10% on the field to unleash its attacks. It was also as dependent a stealth rocker as ever, with its strong matchups against common hazard removal in Excadrill, Salamence, and Tentacruel. Swampert's defensive profile actually improved in Generation 8 with the removal of Hidden Power, meaning it could no longer be surprised by an HP Grass tacked on one of the Pokemon it usually checked. It also sometimes swapped out Toxic for Yawn, which worked beautifully in tandem with Flip Turn. Yawn's threatening of incapacitating sleep on Pokemon coming into Swampert tended to force awkward switches from opponents, allowing for the Swampert user to fully take advantage with hard-hitting teammates like Conkelder. Especially since if the opponent didn't switch out of the Yawn, they of course went to sleep. Swampert wasn't a star presence, but it had a solid place in the metagame for its ability to effectively facilitate several big hitters in Generation 8 UU. Generation 9 has been a mixed bag for Swampert. On the one hand, it lost Scald and Toxic, so the ability to harangue opposing Pokemon with debilitating status is no longer an option. On the other hand, it kept Flip Turn, which continues to be excellent, and it received an incredible new move, Knock Off. It also received Bulk Up, which is a solid boosting option, but Knock Off provides its standard stealth rocking flip turning sets with a tremendous new utility. Sadly, this amazing new move wasn't sufficient for Swampert to return to Yu Yu. It was totally outclassed by Guard Chomp, which was now rocking spikes in its moveset. Thus, for the first time ever, Swampert fell below Yu to where it currently resides, Are you? There, it is a solid defensive presence doing what it always does, without Bombast or Pizzazz. Sometimes you just need something you can depend on to do the less thrilling jobs. Most notably, Swampert is a great check to the terrifying Rev of Room, as well as its general tanking ability being nicely on display against other popular Pokemon like Cobalion. It remains to be seen where Swampert will end up in Gen 9, but for now, it looks looks to keep on trucking the same way it always has. And that's it. So how great was Swampert actually? Well, it started off with two metagame defining stints in OU, especially in its debut generation, then played an enormously important role in UU from generations five through eight, a particularly impressive run considering the power creep constantly thrown at it. Its mega evolution came around in generation six and was a superb part of UU as well. Then in gen seven, a confluence of changes led to it becoming a bona fide part of OU again. Currently, Swampert resides in gen nine RU, where it continues to provide the stalwart defensive presence it has been for over two decades. Swampert hasn't been much of a VGC Pokemon in its time, but it's had some solid placements, including base part outperforming Mega in Gen 6, then Mega's Redemption in Gen 7. So overall, Swampert is one of the most successful starter Pokemon of all time. Thanks for watching, everyone. And as always, if you like the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False Swipe Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content. And in the comments, I want to know, what do you think about competitive Swampert? How would you buff it for Scarlet and Violet. Whatever it is, let me know in the comments. Also, thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos, and thank you to everyone else watching as well. And follow my crew on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.